I took that song so that we can come to the consciousness of where we are this morning. The scripture tells us that you are come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels. To the blood that speaks better things, the blood of sprinkling and the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. We have not come unto man, but we have come unto God. The Bible says in the book of Matthew that where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. So we have not come to a dead God, we have come to a living God, the one that quickened the dead and caused those things that be not to come to pass. I want us to lift up our voices this morning and begin to appreciate God for his presence in this service this morning. Let's give our thanks given unto him that is quick and powerful. Let's thank the Lord that he is here and his presence will do something great in our lives. Let's appreciate God the one that is able to do all things. The one that seated within the circle of the head. Glorify the name of the Lord in this temple this morning. Glorify the name of the Lord in this temple this morning. Appreciate him. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory that is due unto him. Magnify the Lord for he is good and his mercies endures forever. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Worship him, worship him. He's alive forevermore. He's alive forevermore. Lord, we give you praise. We magnify you. We thank you for bringing us into your presence this morning. Thank you, Lord, my God. Thank you, Lord, my God, for giving us the privilege to gather together in your presence. For where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. We well, thank you, Lord, for your presence in this service this morning. We well, thank you, Lord, for your presence in this service this morning. We well, thank you, Lord, for your presence in this service this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because we know that you will do a quick work in our lives today. In the name of Jesus. We bless your holy name, King of glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 5. 40 rather verse 5. Isaiah chapter 40 and 5. Verse 5. In this service the glory of the Lord will be revealed. In the name of Jesus. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. You are going to lift up your voice and say, Lord... Your glory will be revealed in me. In the name of Jesus, for everyone that is available in this service, both online and on site, Lord, your glory will be revealed in us. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, your glory shall make manifest in our lives today. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatsoever that does not 
glorify the name of the Lord that is already in our lives uh, shall be consumed uh, by the glory of the Lord. Uh, even this morning, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, the glory of the Lord uh, shall be manifest uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Even in our lives today, in the precious name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Let your glory, O oh God, be revealed in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, let our destiny, Lord my God, be quickened. Even in this morning's service, in the precious name of Jesus, let your glory, O oh God, be made manifest in our lives. In the precious name of Jesus. We submit ourselves to you this morning that in this morning's service, uh, your glory shall be revealed. Uh, your glory shall be revealed uh, in our lives uh, in the name of Jesus. O Sakara Masekarea, Reproto Rigarabosha, Masende Rigarabosha, Repopo Sopredia in Gladabosha, Mefufutoto Rikayaba. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit. It says where two or three are gathered in his name. There he is in the midst of them. Now that he is talking about the spirit of the Lord. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is something that is constant that must be there. And that thing is called liberty. Pastor defined it for, to us this morning as freedom. You can't see someone that is operating in freedom that is not peaceful. You can't see someone that is operating in freedom that does not have a freedom of expression. You can't see someone that, that has freedom that is operating in freedom that does not have quick access to gaining things that he or she needs. When my son wants to ask me for something, he comes unhindered. He comes without asking for any other person's permission. He comes freely and opens his mouth and asks. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We're going to pray this morning, Lord, enforce your liberty upon my life. Every area of my life that is still questionable, let your liberating power begin to operate. Every area of my life that I'm still experiencing itches, that I'm still experiencing limitations, that I'm still struggling, Lord, let your liberty be enforced in those areas in the name of Jesus. Every area of my life, oh God, that I am still asking questions, that I'm still confused, let your liberty, Lord my God, take effect from now. In the mighty name of Jesus, every area of my life that I am not experiencing peace of mind, let your liberty be enforced in the name of Jesus. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let liberty take hold of me. Let your liberty take hold of me. Let your liberty take hold of me. Let your liberty be operational in every area of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We experience your liberty this morning. No itches, no limitation, no hindrance. We gain access by the power of liberty. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. We gain access uh, into the power of God. We gain access uh, into the presence of God. Uh, we gain access uh, into the blessings of God uh, by the spirit of liberty in the name of Jesus. Oh, so pretty a rigor of Osha. Rito Thomas send the rigor of Osha. We gain access uh, into the blessings of God. We gain access uh, into the liftings of God by the liberty of God in the name of Jesus. The spirit of the Lord is that spirit of liberty. It gains access into our hearts in this service this morning. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Masende Rigadabosha. Rikratsaboso Predia. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Oh, Yakatao Yakado Yagadaba. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 5. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now another translation says... The word of God is a living force. <laughs> it's continuous. It's always alive. And anyone that receives that word comes alive. If your, if any area of your life receives the life-giving force of the word of God, that area comes alive. Is it in your health? Is it in your finances? Is it in your emotions? Is it in your family life? Any area of your life that receives the life-giving power of God's word comes alive automatically. We're going to pray, Lord, as your word comes this morning, it injects life into me. I receive life into my health. I receive life into my finances. I receive life into my body. I receive life into my marriage. I receive life into my business. I receive life into my home. Every area of your life that you expect the life of God to flow. Lord, let your life giving force begin to manifest. Open your mouth and begin to cry unto the Lord this morning. Open your mouth and begin to cry unto the Lord this morning. For the word of the Lord is quick and powerful. The word of the Lord is living and powerful. In my health, uh, the word of the Lord comes alive. Uh, in my finances, uh, the word of the Lord comes alive. Uh, in my life, uh, in the name of Jesus, every area of my life, uh, receive the life of God's power. In the name of Jesus, receive the life of the word of God. In the name of Jesus, uh, because I am here this morning, uh, because I am here on this holy ground, uh, even this morning, uh, I receive uh, fresh inoculation of the life of God into my body, into my spirit, into my business, into my finance, into every area of my life. I receive the word of God and it comes alive in me. I receive the word of God and it comes alive in me. I receive the word of God and it explodes life in me in the name of Jesus. Rigarabosha so predia. Ritoto korobo rigarabosha. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We worship your name. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, one other thing that the word of the Lord does is that it breaks into pieces whatever is not supposed to be in our lives. It begins to address those areas and it begins to melt them. As we submit to the authority of that word, it melts everything that is not of God in our lives. Shall we quickly turn our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 29. Jeremiah 23 verse 29. Is not my word like as a fire? Say the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Now it says his word is like a fire. What does fire do? It consumes. It consumes. And is it not like a hammer? What does a hammer do? It breaks things. So this morning we're going to pray, Lord, as your word begins to come this morning, I receive grace to submit to the authority of your word, that your word may change my life, that your word may revolutionize my life, that your word may transform my life. Lord, I receive grace to submit. I will not struggle to receive your word this morning. I will not fight your word in my heart this morning. I will not build a wall of resistance against your word in my heart this morning. Lord, I receive a teachable spirit to be able to receive the engrafted word of wisdom that comes from this pulpit this morning. In the name of Jesus, I look forward to your word changing me from glory to glory. I look forward to your word transforming me from glory to glory. I look forward to your word bringing forth a change, a lasting change in my life. Even as it begins to come from this pulpit this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Father we thank you this morning because we know you will come in a way we've never seen you before we thank you because we know that your word will come expressly this morning and your word will be mixed with faith even in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus thank you because it's a great day for us to the glory and to the praise of your name in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we glad to be in the house of God this morning? Let's just begin to open the channels of our spirit in prayer. Let's just begin to exalt the name of the Lord for bringing us to this day. This is the fourth Sunday in the month of March, the fourth month in this year. It's been the Lord's goodness. Let's begin to exalt him. Open the channels of your spirit. Open the channels of your spirit. Begin to bless your maker this morning. Who is like unto thee?
is life unto thee. to worship God this morning. Are we happy to be in God's presence? Are we ready to praise God this morning? Are we with our dancing shoes this morning? Okay. Tell your neighbor, give me space. On your left and on your right, tell them, give me space. Today is me and my God. All right.
more. You are not just large, you are a great God. I say you are God. You are, you are not just people. You are not just large, you are a great God. Oh, you are God. You are God. You are God. You are God.
you change not that is why we are not consumed we thank you Lord for being dependable at all times in all ways for all things thank you Heavenly Father Lord we praise your name this morning we thank and exalt you in the name of Jesus you may please be seated time to honor our people. Honor our people. First Samuel chapter 15.
supposed to send it all I think it's true hallelujah amen the wonders of creation are a direct product of the word of God. Did you hear me? What you see as creation, the galaxies, the stars, look at the different planets, all right? Neptune, Saturn, Uranus, all these things, Mars. And the entire galaxy a product of the word of God. The wealth deposits of God in the earth in terms of what we call natural resources, the oil, the gold, everything is a direct product of the word of God. John 1, 3 says it, that all things were made by him, the word. And there was not anything made that was not made by the word of God. All things are a product of the word of God. So if you are going to really see the creative work of God, then you have to understand that it is by his word. Right? Now the fact that it is documented in what we call the Bible does not reduce its authority, its potency, and its eternal power. Are you getting what I'm saying? The word of God is the instrument via which God made anything you see. Look, there is no wealth you see in anybody's life today. It has a direct contact with a natural resource. There's nothing. No matter how, look, no matter how you want to draw the matrix of the wealth that is in the earth, it will have a direct contact with a natural resource that comes from the ground. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, and the earth is not only the ground. The air is part of the earth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The sea is part of what? The earth. So there is no way you are going to actually identify any wealth anywhere that you will not find a direct contact. Having a direct contact with a natural resource on the earth. There's no way you are going to define that wealth. In any life, in any nation, in any place. Even nations that do not have natural resources have a found, well, there's no nation, nation that does not have, all right? But some nations have more than some. Some don't have as much as some. Some nations, what they have is not a natural resource in terms of something that is in the ground. What they have is the natural resource of the fact that their whole nation is positioned at an entry point into a continent. That you cannot effectively enter into a particular region of the earth except you come through that place. So because they have been locationed as the access into that place, that is their own, because they are naturally located there. It's a natural resource. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not until you dig the ground and you pull something out that you can say, oh, this is a uh, you know, natural resource of this thing. Some people, what they have is the, is the texture of their ground. It's the kind of soil that they have in order to produce agricultural stuff for the earth. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that has located them in that place. But you know that the ground does not work alone. It has to work with certain atmospheric things that work with it, you know, the sunlight and all that, in order for the soil to be that productive. So God has locationed everything, and all of this is a product of the word of God. Then it means that if you want to seek God, or let me say you want to experience the wealth of God, you have to go to the source. And the source is what? Is the word of God. 
So when we look into the word of God, it's so that we can be correctly, perfectly positioned to enter into that which God has for everyone. Now listen, you see we are in a season. And people need to understand this. I was just listening to Rod Parsley. And Rod Parsley was saying that any believer, now, what he said, he said this is not the time to play. This is what? This is not the time to play. That every believer, he said, one, he said you must get back into the word of God and you must get back into your prayer closet. God will, not, listen, there is no technology that will come on the earth that will not at the end of the day, all right, be a product of the inspiration of God. Perversion can come to that technology. That is when the imagination of man is continually evil. The Bible talks about that, all right? That the evil heart of unbelief and when the imagination of man's heart is continually evil. But the truth of the matter is that God is the creator of all things. Men are discoverers. All right? We discover the things, but God is the creator of everything. And when you get back to the word of God, you will begin to find that in your safety, listen, your guarantee is in the word of the living God. We are praying this morning and we read James 1.25. That it is called the perfect law of liberty. It, listen, liberty is freedom. You want to experience freedom that is in its perfect state. It is only in the word of God that you can find it. And any believer now that will find their way into the place of distinction will have to get there by the way of the word. Are you getting what I'm saying this morning? So this morning I bring the word of God to you and I want you to bring your attention to it. He says, my son, attend what? To thy words. And incline your ears to my sayings. Now because the wisdom of man is going only in one direction and it is in a degrading direction. Do you understand? The only thing that goes in an increasing, improving dimension is that which is rooted in the divine. That is rooted in divinity and rooted in God. Now, the unfortunate part is that men are very quick to disregard what comes from God because he speaks first before he does. So they will say, what is he saying? Like the days of Noah, that there is going to be rain. Listen, it had never rained. And this man was building an ark 120 years. Did he not look crazy? But he continued to build because he was listening to the voice of God. He was following the leading of God. The ones that will find themselves in exemption are the ones that will listen to the voice of God, not the voice of trends. When the flood came, he carried all their trends away. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because there is a spirit of trend in the church too now. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. And it's coming from the place of inferiority complex. And the reason that inferiority complex is there is because we, as the believers, don't know our true identity. If you know who you are, you will know that the world is not worth being copied. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because we don't know who we are. And the reason we don't is because we are not looking into the perfect law of liberty. The word of God serves as a mirror. But it is not the kind of mirror that you have at home. Because the mirror you have at home, when you stand in front of that mirror, you, all right, you are the real image. The reflected image is inside the mirror. That is called the virtual image. That image moves when the real one moves. But the word of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it says looking as in a mirror, all right, beholding as in a glass. He said we are changed. That means what you are seeing in that mirror is the real image. You are the reflective image. He said, therefore, we are changed. You know, the, if you look at the natural mirror, it is the natural mirror that copies what you do. 
When you move this way, it moves. When you move that way, it moves. When you stand, it stands. When you sit, it sits. He said, no, the mirror of the word of God is different. It is the one that moves and then you move. It's the one that turns and then you turn. He said, but the secret is that you have to keep beholding. If you continue to behold, that's why Jesus used the word continue. He said, if you continue in my word, not that if you know, if you continue in it, if you are consistent in it, as we are praying this morning, we read that James 1.25, he said, he that, he, that, he that continues in the perfect law of liberty and is not a forgetful hearer. And we discover that the word forgetful doesn't mean that it's out of your memory. It means negligence. Forgetful means that it becomes lazy by the word. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's lazy concerning the word. It's not, uh, you know, can they big the Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I the one that killed Jesus? Do you understand all those kind of things? You are, you are slipping into that negligence of the word. You are getting into the dereliction of spiritual responsibility. Meditation is not a gift, it's a discipline. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night and observe to do according to all that is written therein. He said, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Listen, whether they prayed for you or they did not pray for you, if you go by the way of meditation, whether a prophet call your name or didn't call your name matters not. Do you understand what I'm saying? Whether anybody laid hands on you or not, it matters not, you will prosper. Do you understand? Let one million witches stand like this. I said, this boy will not prosper. You carry the word of God and meditate. Do you understand what I'm saying? You stay in the meditation of the word of God because the meditation of the word of God is what, it is what transforms you. It is your transformation. That is what we call the renewing of the mind in the New Testament is meditation in the word of God. So you have to take up the responsibility of meditating in the word of God. I was listening to something uh, 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 early yesterday morning and somebody said something and he, when he said the thing, I, I said, is this thing actually correct like this? I've heard this thing over and over and over. You know, and I said that, you know, if you're a preacher and, uh, you know, uh, you, you are preaching the word of God, uh, 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 that you also have to, that the anointing, right? The anointing will just bless the people. But if you too want to enter into the things you are preaching, you have to use your faith, all right? You have to use your faith uh, that the anointing is just a gift, you know, to teach and all that. And I began to say, God, okay, is this incorrect? I don't want to. So, I, I, because it's coming from a respected, you know, quarter, so I, I was looking away from it, but my spirit was dragging me back. Then I went into the word of God. This is not a teaching. Of, do you understand what I'm saying? I went into the word of God. Yesterday in the afternoon, I started around 3.58 p.m. in the afternoon. I began to read the word of God. That this thing, I want to understand I'm a minister now, do you understand? And they are saying this thing about what I'm doing. That you can preach prosperity and be broke. I said, is it possible? So I went into the word of God. How does it work? Do you understand? And I read, I, I began to study the word of God. Page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven. It's, it's not message, oh, this one is for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I realized that the word of God says, that they that minister of the gospel should live off the gospel. I say, okay, what does it mean? Do you understand? For Jesus said to them in Luke 22, 35, that when I sent you, lacked you anything? They said, no. I said, hold on. He said, on the basis of the sending, there must be no lack. The spirit. Simple, no, no. It's only, simple understanding. You don't need Greek and Hebrew about this thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? That I am a Christian first before I'm a minister. I understand that one. And I do what every other believer does. I pray, I fast, I study the word of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? I give. I live by faith. And the spirit of God said to me, he said to respond to a divine calling is faith. Oh. To live every other thing that you want to do in your own life. And God said, I want you to go in this direction. And you followed him. He said, that is faith. So for somebody to say that you have to use your faith, he said, you are using your faith already. Because now I am following a leader that cannot be physical AC. I say my employer, where is your letter of employer? <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? It's how do you, how do you pay your salary? Shepi, they will give you letter of employment. They wrote everything there. Where is my own letter of employment? Do you understand? Is that not faith? And he has to take care of me. And I have bills like you have bills. And he said I should not do any other thing. I should do this one. That began to occur to me that, listen, you see, the engineer does not become rich because he built a house for himself. He becomes rich because he builds houses for other people. The lawyer does not become wealthy because he is winning 
his own personal case. It's because he's winning the cases of other people. I said, therefore, that means that whatever God put in my life that he's using for other people who has to bless me and enrich me. You can't tell me otherwise. It's a simple this thing. It's the word of God. I don't have to argue. Just get in the word of God. That's what meditation does. It takes you on an adventure of revelation. In order for you to arrive at a point that is called conviction where no man can deceive you again. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm telling you how we go on this journey. So I've given you my own. So I have seven pages from the word of God like this. On this matter, I sat down. I said, Holy Spirit, I'm not trying to look for trouble, but you are the one dragging me into this thing. Went to 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy 5, was reading everything that he said, he said, he said that the husband man that laboured is first partaker. Do you know the meaning of first partaker? <laughs> Priority in the harvest. That laboured. He said, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treads the corn. I said, what does it mean, O oh Lord? He said, when the ox, the, the, the bull, He's treading the corn. In the corn that he's treading, he's not treading for itself. He's treading for his master. But in that which he's treading for his master, if the master wants this ox to continue to tread, the master has to care for this ox. So because of the fact that I am doing this work for God, there is remuneration. Do you understand? He said, for the laborer is worthy. Do you know the meaning of the word worthy? Or is worthy of his wages. Wages is not gift. Is worthy of his reward. Reward means wages, salary. Are you there? Aha. Uh -huh. What am I telling you? This is not the message. I'm just telling you how I took an issue. And I said, Lord, I need help on this matter. Lest I be. So I realized at the end of the day that to be called into the work of the ministry in this way is actually a double blessing. Because just like you are using your faith for things, I will use my faith for things. Then I have an additional one. The fact that I serve him in this dimension is an additional provision on his own. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then the fact that I also operate as a Christian is also a blessing on his own. Actually, it is the opportunity to enter into a higher dimension of these things. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you have to take responsibility for your spiritual development. That's the angle I'm going now. So taking this one now and working it and living by it if a young minister comes to me in the future and is confused, I will not tell him theory. Do you understand? I had the problem. I went into the world. I found the solution. by changing my life. So I can say, young man, let us follow this way. I have gone there. The things that we have, our hands have handled of the word of life. Are the things that what? First Samuel chapter 16. See, recommendation eh, is based on uniqueness. Recommendation is based on what? Good. Because what is common is not greatly valued. Follow my thought this morning. All right. The single law of uncommon wealth. Why do you recommend something? It is because you have found something about it that is of value. And that is why you are recommending it. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 16. Let's read from verse 14. 1 Samuel chapter 16. We'll go fast this morning. I just want to show you a few things. Because what is different about you is what will bring distinction to you. Listen. What is different, what's unique about you is where God has put your distinction. It is the prosperity of scarcity. One of the things they said about Jesus, he said, no man speak like this. Do you understand? That's one of the reasons they went outside. He said, what, what wisdom has God given this man that such mighty works are done by him? There was something unique about him. And God has created you to be a carrier of a uniqueness. In that, he has put your greatness. He said, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Let's just go on. We are going on to verse 20. We have to move fast. Otherwise, I'll be reading my Bible. And Saul's servants 
said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit is an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. So there's a problem now. His servants are rehearsing the problem. They are repeating the problem. It means there's nobody that has a solution there. They, are, they, can, they can diagnose the problem. They can't provide the solution. The other thing that is happening is that, oh, God is angry with you now. And he has released evil spirit upon you. Uh-huh. He said, let our Lord now command thy servants. It has run away. <laughs> Verse 15. When you are there, say we are there, and then I will go. <laughs> okay, you are there, okay. <sighs> Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man. To do what? Seek out a man. Who is a cunning player on an app. You see, the word cunning is very important. Skillful player. They are not looking for anybody that can just play. But somebody that can play what? Skillfully. A cunning player on an harp, and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. That there is a way this guy will play, the spirit will respond to him. Are you getting what I'm saying? That there is a way that when the man touches the strings like this, even God that put this spirit on you to punish you, we withdraw it. There is something about his playing. He's cunning in his playing. And Saul so said unto his servants, provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. You see? Then answered one of his servants and said, behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing. He said, and a mighty valiant man and a man of war and prudent in matters and a comely person. And the Lord is, do you see the last line there? The Lord war. Hey, because this thing I want to deal with is a matter from the Lord. A cunning player who the Lord is with. Go on. He says, wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, send me David thy son. Which is with the sheep. So go and take him from the sheep now. Are you getting what I'm saying? He can't stay there again because he can play. Go on. And Jesse took an ass, laden with bread and a bottle of water and a kid, and sent them by David his son unto Saul. Why was Saul looking for David? Because there was an issue that they found only David as the one that could solve it. Listen, if God is going to draw a trajectory of distinction for you, God will carry you through a place where there's something uncommon about you that is required in that space. Do you understand what I'm saying? Anywhere you are, you need to seek God. God, what have you put in me for this place that will make me distinguished in this place? That we provide, do you understand? That we bring about a solution. That I will step into this place as a solution provider. You see, you are the light of the world. You think it's just a poetic statement. It's not poetry. It's not poetry. If they say, look, I mean, a, 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 an American billionaire said one day, he said it is difficult for you to be racist against excellence. Do you understand? Oh! You know the story of Ben Carson? Best neurosurgeon in the hospital. Johns Hopkins Hospital. And there was a white doctor, a patient he was trying to handle. And the patient was angry. He was a racist man. In your sickness, you are still... Eh, voila. You know what I'm he said, no, it's not touch him. It's not touch him. They should go and look for one. one, one. They should get him another doctor. They should get him the best doctor here. They, they told him, he said, sir, is he the best you want? He said, that's him all. So you want to choose between your pride now and your wellness. Which one do you want now? You will submit that your pride, that your prejudice, that demon that is inside of you. Even you will tell it. Okay, okay. See, I need to be well. <laughs> Let this thing kill me here. So we will close our eyes to the fact that this <laughs> is not somebody we like, but somebody we need. Yeah, are you with me? If they don't like you, 
but they need you. They don't have a choice. But many people want to be liked instead of being to the one that is needed. You need, look, listen, the one that is needed is more relevant than the one that is liked. In fact, they will go and meet the one that they like. I ask him to help them to look for the one they need. I say, ah, come, ah, you know, I like you. Ah, yes, sir. There's this thing we want to do. Do you know who can do it? They say, do, do you know who, who we like? Who can do it? Do you understand what I'm saying? So if they put you there and you cannot do it, no matter glory to God you talk about, no matter all the hallelujah you say in this world, it doesn't mean anything, no. It was not, listen, it was Pharaoh that said to Joseph, he said, in as much as God has showed you this thing, he said, truly, the spirit of God is in you. It, it was not the, the, Joseph that was saying, ah, the spirit of God is in me. I have the light of God in me. Oh, he came, he brought solution. He said, you have two dreams. He said, that dream is two. But what God is saying is one. Then he gave him the interpretation and then gave him the application of the interpretation. And the application was so ingenious. He said, let a fourth part, or is it a fifth part? Either 20 or 25 percent. He said, in the first seven years, let about 20 to 25 percent of the harvest be taken. Let them be kept in storage. Let, we are going to pick certain cities where we are going to. You see, that is strategic download. He said, we are going to put them in certain cities. And then there will be storage there for distribution purposes. All right? He said, and they will come under the treasury management of Pharaoh. So when the seven years of famine is over, I mean, of, of plenty is over, and we enter into the seven years of famine, go and read very well. They did not save for Egypt. They saved for the world. Because in the seven years of famine, Egypt became the food basket. Everybody came to Egypt to buy. So they had the ones that we feed people with. They had the ones that we sell to the world. So they must have had an understanding of the population of Egypt and the growth potential of the population, the growth ratio, every year within that 14-year period. That if the population is growing at this rate, then after 14 years, we should have had such provision that we, I mean, after the first seven years, we will have provisions that will be able to cater for the people. So there was nat national storage, there was international storage. So anybody that came to buy in Egypt, you will buy it at the price of Egypt. And if you have another place, go there now. It's the prosperity of scarcity. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is how you must operate in terms of your skill. It's your skill we are talking about. That's what we are talking about today. How can you just be saying the grace of God is at work in you and it does not have any specific dimension? Do you understand? They say, no. how, did they, how did they give Paul the right hand of fellowship? He said, when they saw that the same way that God was mighty through Peter to the Jews, he <laughs> was mighty through me in a different way to the Gentiles. They didn't have capacity for the Gentiles. This man brought the one for the Gentiles in a unique way. He said, therefore, they gave me the right hand of fellowship. Respect. You don't beg for it. Do you understand? You produce. You, you do what? You produce. You produce. It, look, if you are a beggar, you, are, you keep begging, you keep looking for people to help you this way, that way, you haven't found the thing that you will use to stand out. And you must be on an adventure for that. You must develop yourself for that. You must be in pursuit of it. In the school of progress, promotion, prosperity, the key to being on equal is found in what is uncommon about you. Have you read Genesis chapter 3, verse 1? Let's read it. I want to show you something. Genesis 3, just verse 1. You know, that Paul, in 2 Corinthians eleven three was saying, just open the Genesis 3 one, all right? You know that Paul, in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3, was saying that, that we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. He said, lest, lest, lest uh, you be deceived. They take advantage of you. He said that you will not be 
beguiled as Satan was deceived by the subtlety of the devil. This is what took human beings. Humanity was taken by one skill. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast in the field. That's all. When it comes to being subtle, nobody matched the serpent. That was the A game he brought. He knew that, listen, I can only attempt this thing once. If I don't get it once, I cannot use the principle of deception again because I would have been exposed. So what will I use that will get it done once? Excellence is not perfection. Excellence is the ability to get it right the first time. Do you understand what I'm saying? He said, I'm only going to do this once. If you attempted Adam and Eve and you didn't get it, ah, it might take another season. He will, he will have to, but his game is that subtlety is his way. He said, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. What is it that is more about you than any other? Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, it was more subtle than any beast in the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yeah, he shall know, as God said, he began to play on her mind. Let me tell you the picture. Let me show you the picture. If you have met you know, the Bible says that, that when she ate, she gave her husband who was with her. So you want to ask yourself, how is this conversation going on? And the man was looking. Is he a mumu? It was not a mumu. It's after he ate that he became mumu. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what was going on? How did all this conversation take place? It is because you, you are trying to physicalize the conversation. It was a mental conversation. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was speaking to her thought. If you had seen Eve, you just see her like this. And the serpent was talking. That's why the Bible says that uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down what? That's where the battle is now. Bringing into captivity every what? Why do you need to bring the thought into captivity? Why do you have to cage it? Do you, know, do, you, do you know why you bring something to captivity? You take their freedom away from them. Their ability to run freely, you remove it. You cage it. You imprison it. Why, do, why are there thoughts that have to be caged? Not allowed to run free. Bringing into captivity every thought. And the what? And every knowledge. Everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And this is why people are missing it. If the devil can beat you in the knowledge area, he has captured you. If he gets you in the thought realm, he has captured you. If he can infiltrate your imagination, oh, he has had his way. He said this, he was more subtle, crafty, cunning, divisive. What's coming in that way? That's why people who carry their phone, they don't know. The subtlety of imagination. If you're scrolling like this, scrolling like this, and seeing what, what you know, the, the generation of children, the first generation of children that, that their nanny is, is, is they were, their, their babysitting, their babysitter was technology. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so I, was, I saw a clip. And you see the baby, a toddler, 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 asleep like this, and he's doing like this. The brain is gone. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see how ch some children go into a rage the moment their device is taken away from them. They, they, they burst into a rage. And they, see, that generation, I, 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 this is where, all right? I mean, one of the things is that it's coming from parents. Let me leave that message. I'm not going that direction. I'll, I'll start going in another thing. <laughs> when David had the opportunity to take Goliath, he didn't have a second one. Is that how you took him now? Or you forget about it? So he had to bring his A game. So in terms of the sling, he knew that was his way. 
The shepherd had a lot of things that the shepherd can use. But this one, he knew, he said, that, look, let me go into the place where my genius is. And he took the sling. And the reason I'm saying this to you this morning, bringing this message to you, is that you have to go to God. Let him begin to give revelation unto you of the genius that he has put on the inside of you. It's God that put it there. So you can't know it more than the person that put it there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Did Joseph just wake up just there and just, ah, I'm a dream? It's, these are the communications of God. Do you understand? That he had two gifts in his life. Joseph had two gifts in his life. The one gift is the interpretation of dreams. The second gift is administration. Right? And in his father's house, both gifts brought him into trouble. Because in administration, his brothers were doing some things that were not right. He went to go and report to his father. Then he now told them his dreams, which brought another trouble. But this is it. Every time that he had to use the gift of the dream and interpretation of dream, they were not, they were momentary. They happened in a space and they opened a season. Then he enters into that season. In that season, he is sustained by the gift of administration. So the moment he told them his dreams, and they began to get angry, and they sold him to the, uh, uh, the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites sold him to the Egyptians, Abi. They shall sold him. And the Egyptian carried him and carried him home. When he got to Potiphar's house, he moved, he was in there, he was there for a season. There was no dream that was being interpreted. Administration was where he manifested his distinction. To the point where Potiphar put everything in his hands and didn't look onto anything except the food he had. He was in charge of the entire household. He became the household manager because of the gift of administration. And that brought him into the prison. And when he got into the prison, he was still serving in that same capacity and doing things and helping and all that. And then, and then he had the opportunity to interpret the dream again. And when he interpret, interpreted the dream, he had the opportunity of leaving that place and going into the palace. And when he got into the palace, the gift of, but he learned something. Let me tell you, God will process your gift into a skill. God will do what? He will process your gift into what? Into a skill. You are not born with a skill. You are born with a gift. You develop it into a skill. So God took him through a process where he was the gift he was learning how to administer from his father's house to Potiphar's house to the prison. In the prison, he was doing a bit of administration there. That was why the, the chief prison officer now put these two men in his hands. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now put these two men in his hands. Where he now had the opportunity of interpreting their dream and then opened him up. And when he got into the palace, he now began to administer. So he was over Egypt now. And the rest of his life, he was doing administration. The last time he did interpretation was when he was about to die. He told them, when you leave, carry my bones. He knew they will not stay there forever. He knew they were going at a certain time. All right? And he said, when you leave, keep my bones where you just carry like this. <laughs> all right? He knew that they will stay there long enough that all that will be left is bones. Are you getting what I'm saying? But he was sustained. The glory of Joseph today is found in the gift of administration that he developed over that process of time, his father's house and Potiphar's house and then in the prison and then he came into Egypt and then he was operating that gift at that dimension where he, you know, he now became the prince of Egypt like you know, they call it in the movie or the prime minister of Egypt and all that glory came. Listen, God is a God of skill. Is what? He's a God of skill. And when you understand how God works by his skill, then you begin to see. Let me show you something interesting here. Numbers chapter 10. Now, one of the problems that people have, one of the problems that people have is that they are quick to put more value on what another person has than what they have. 
and it's killing, it's killing a lot of things. Do you understand? They, they put more value. They recognize what another person has, so much so than what they have. Maybe there's somebody here, and you are a good writer. But something on the inside of you is thinking, is measuring you against another writer. And you begin to compare yourself with that. Do you understand? And, and then the more you are doing that, you are telling yourself, you are not this, you are not that, you are not that. What you need to understand is that you are different. It's not the issue of whether you are better or whether you are less. The issue is that you are different. Are you getting what I'm saying? You are what? You are different. Numbers chapter 10, verse 28. This will interest you. Numbers 10, let's go to verse 28. We are reading verse 28 to verse 30. To verse 33. It's an interesting reading. Numbers 10, 28, yeah. He said, those were the journeys of the children of Israel according to their armies when they set forward. So now, now they are going towards the promised land, all right? So they, they started their journey now. And Moses said to o Hobab, oh, this is Hobab guy, I love the guy. And Moses said to o Hobab, listen, oh, the son of uh, Reguel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law. So this is Moses' brother-in-law, right? Okay, yeah. He said, we are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come down with us and we will do the good. For the Lord had spoken good concerning Israel. Come down with us. We will find you something. And he said unto him, I will not go. But I will depart to my own land and to my own kindred. Next verse. And he said, leave us not. I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of what eyes. See, the guy understood what he had. He knew that what he had, they didn't have it. So then Moses came to him, he said, please, come and follow us, we need your help. He said, when we get there, so Moses made a presentation, this is what we are going, when we get there, eh, the land that God said, he will do good to us, we too will do good to you. He said, what is the meaning of we will do good? I don't know the meaning of we will do good. I'm not going. Ah, Moses said, no, <laughs> my brother. I know that, you see, when God said we should move this way, the geography of this wilderness is inside you. <laughs> and if we are to encamp anywhere, we don't know how to find, we have never been 430 years inside the village. They don't know the way now. But this guy lived in the wilderness. He knew the way. He said, look at what he now said. When he said, I'm not going home. He said, and it shall be, if thou go with us, yea, it shall be, that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same we will do unto you. Uh -huh. Next verse. And they departed. <laughs> Say, it's now that you are talking. They are saying, yeah, when we get there, we will do you good. What does that mean? I don't know that one. He said, when we get to that place, he said the same thing. He said, the same shall we do unto you. <laughs> now let's go. Do you understand? I know some of you Christians will say, I'm doing it for God. Did you hear what I said? They said, I'm doing it for God. You are doing it for which God? Do you understand what I'm saying? When God has put this thing on the inside of you, he said, by this you will become great. Too. Do you know that God didn't give, with the pillar of fire, with the angel of his presence and everything that went with them, his own bab that will tell you where the direction is. The pillar will not tell you. The cloud will not tell you. It's all bab that will tell you. And God didn't break it. God said, it's all bab that will still tell you. Moses was telling God like this, that I'm, I'm a stammerer, I cannot talk. God didn't say, let me touch your lips. He said, Aaron, we talk for you. Listen, there are certain things that it is you that we do it in somebody's life. Do you understand? And in doing it, he was compensated with becoming the high priest. And his lineage carried the priesthood. Do you understand? He said, thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons. Because Aaron entered into that place. God has a value spot for you. Enter it. Are you getting what I'm saying? God has a value spot for you. Enter it. It's important for you to know this. One time my wife took me to where she makes her hair. Uh, I, okay, I took her there and we got there and then the brother of the lady that owns the place had one corner he was the baba. And my wife said, ah, he's a good baba. I said, my own baba is been like five years, that time, you know. 
I said, like, five years is my, no, even seven years then. I said, my baba, like seven years, I don't know any. He said, let him, uh, so the young man, I said, okay, let me give him a try. So I sat, the guy called my hand, then did all manner of magic and did everything and then cleaned the air. Okay, so I said, okay, that is cool. Then he said, he can come to the house. I said, no problem. So he'll come to the house, he'll do this, he'll go, ah, all the uh, fizzy. Ah, I was enjoying it. So my baba was wondering what was going on. Because somebody is not doing it differently now. You, because you see your own, eh? <laughs> yeah, I've become used to me now. I just scrape the thing like this. You know, because you know how we bring my head every other day. You know, so, but this one now was now, he would do this. Eh? Until one day, I said I wanted to buy a clipper. So the young man said, okay, that will help me with the clipper, something, something, something. And he bought one clipper for me and he told me the price, he gave him the money and everything. So one day, my baba called me and said, ah, Pastor, what happened now? Ah, ah. I'm your guy since long time, this one, that one, and everything. And uh, I said, ah, no. And that is why I told him what happened. And he said, ah, it's not like that. We've been long now. And I said, ah. He said, but you said you wanted to buy clipper one time. I said, I bought it. Oh. He said, which one? I said, ah, I, it's all like that, that. So I don't know how we discussed to the point where I said, I'll, I'll send the picture to him so that he can see what it looks like. So I went on Jume. I saw the clipper. Then I discovered that that guy charged me twice the amount of the clipper. I paid, I gave him money for two. He collected money. <laughs> I went back to my papa. <laughs> I said, this one thing, I know, Wasi will not do this with me. Do you understand? I said, no. Do you, you see, the things you are doing that took you away, I'll tell Wasi now, I'll be doing this one. Do you understand? <laughs> but, you, but you see this one that he did, that one is inside. That one is what? He's inside. That uniqueness, ah, uh, no. I said, so I called it. Meanwhile, I've been looking for a way to escape, so I already found one. So I said, how could you? I don't, I don't ever want to. So I'm sorry. No, you cannot be sorry. I had you this boy. You do not even have just small 1K, 2K. You double the price I paid for two. <laughs> ah, buy two, get one. Do you, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Oh, I said, you know, my husband, you don't know how to price things. <laughs> I said, look, let's just pay for something. Everybody go their way. Hobab said, I'm not going. What you are saying, I know what I have to offer you is unique. You can't be pricing me anyhow. I'm not going. What do you mean by we do you go find you something? No. Then he, Moses changed it. He said, when we get there, he said, whatever God does with us, the same we do. <laughs> Can you get there without me? You will not get to the place. You find me something. It's not possible. That's why the wisdom of the poor man is despised. You know that story? A small city. Just think about it. A small city. And a great king came. And he invested in a siege. Over a small city that had few men. What's inside the city? Then the few men in this small city refused to give, this, give up. They refuse to surrender to that man. What is inside this city that this great king has put so much investment for this small city? And the few men in the little city too are saying no, they are putting up a resistance. There is something inside this city. Then there was one wise man that knew how to save the small city from the great king. And the people said, teach us because we are not going to give up this land for this man. What's inside this land? You know what the guy do? He don't help them like that. When he helped them, then they got the, their city back. They defeated the king. The king went away. And they gave him a handshake. And the Bible says that the wisdom of the poor man. Ah, how can you have this opportunity and remain poor? He said, you want me to save this land? You are so particular about this land? He said, there's no problem. What's the first thing David asked them? What shall be given to the man that came back? Are you earlier than God? Do you understand what I'm saying? He said, what shall be given to the man that they say, I say, oh God, please, what shall be given to the man that will solve this problem? I know the solution to this problem. What shall be given to the man? They said, he uh, will do this. He uh, will, will be the king's son-in-law. Say, say it again. <laughs> he said, your family will never pay tax again. He said, say it again. Ah! <laughs> He said, where's the problem? Let's go and solve it now. Let me tell you. If you want to solve a problem, 
Go and negotiate the reward first. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then go to God and say, God, uh -huh. I told them that. <laughs> so how are we going to do this thing? Is that not what, is that not what uh, 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 Ezra did? He told the king, he said, no, 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 we don't need to give us any protection. No. Our God is able to protect us. And he went back to the prison. I've gone to Bosto. So what are we going to do now? Are you getting what I'm saying? They tried to put new technology on David. He said, no. The issue is not the technology. It's results you are looking for, sir. Yes or no? They said, yes, sir. Don't worry. I got you. Let's go. And he went to get five smooth stones from the brook. You know he's a sharp man. He knew where to get the stones from. He's, you, know, you know a sharp man when you see one. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you have to get into the place of your genius. That is where God has put your glory. That's where God has put your blessing. That's where God has put your wealth, even in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So Joseph knew that if he is able to interpret dreams, if he's able, I mean, look at when he went, and that's why you have to be proactive about it. When Joseph got in there, he saw those guys. And he said, why is your countenance sad? He said, "Try tell me, what is it? Just tell me. He didn't know it was about a dream. Oh. He said, tell, you see, a man who is always seeking to solve a problem, <laughs> seeking to solve a problem, we find the opportunities available for him. There's another interesting one. Let me read to you. First Kings chapter 5. Uh, chapter 5. I think it's chapter 4. First Kings chapter 4. Oh, it's chapter 5. Let me read the NIV for you. From verse 5. First Kings chapter 5 from verse 5. <clears throat> so, so, now... Um, Solomon wants to build a temple, right? So David had made provision, okay, of all the materials that are needed. But David didn't make all the provision. There was still some material that was needed, right? And so Solomon had come in now to build. But they had also made money available, right, to purchase. Now let's read 1 Kings chapter 5 from verse 5. It says, I want to read the NIV, so let, just, let me just read it for you. He said, I intend, therefore, to build a temple for the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord told my father David, when he said, your son will I put on the throne in your place, uh, that I will put on the throne in your place, will build the temple for my name. So give orders that cedars of Lebanon be cut for me. So this was his letter to Hiram. He said, my men will walk with yours, and I will pay you, I will pay you for your men whatever wages you set. I will pay you whatever wages you set. I will pay you whatever wages you set. Next statement. You know that we have no one so skilled in felling timber as the Sidonians. We don't have anyone. So I know. Do you understand? He says, so whatever you say you will be paid, you will be paid because we have no one as skilled as you guys. So the degree to which, let me use this word, you are indispensable is the degree to which you can command your reward. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said because we have no one as skilled as you guys, he says therefore whatever you say, is this, I, okay, you are not in that verse yet. Verse 7, when Hiram heard Solomon's message, he was greatly pleased and said, Praise be to the Lord today, for he has given David a wise son to rule over this great nation. He says, so Hiram sent word to Solomon. I have received the message you sent me. I will do all that you want in providing the cedar and the juniper logs. My men will hold them down from Lebanon to the Mediterranean Sea and I will float them as rafts by sea to the place you specify. There I will separate them and you can take them away. 
and you are to grant my wish by providing food for my royal household. In this way, Hiram kept Solomon's supply with all the cedar and the juniper logs he wanted. And Solomon gave Hiram 20,000 cores of wheat as food for his household in addition to 20,000 baths of pressed olive oil, Solomon continued to do this for Hiram year after year, seven years. Let me give you perspective. The oil he gave him, hmm? you know the petrol tanker, that long one, 13 every year. 33,000 liters. I did the calculation. 33,000 liters is one. So we will give him one. Olive oil, oh. He will give him one every month. And two at the end of the year. 13th month. Do you understand what I'm saying? He will give him 13 of that for seven years. <laughs> and he gave him every year, the wheat he gave him, was 50,000 bags. If you measure it at the 50 kg, uh, what do you call it? Uh, that cement bag is 50 kg, Abby. Oh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. 50 kg bag, the 50 kg bag. He gave him 50,000 of it in liters. He gave him 2.5 million liters of wheat every year. Are you getting what I'm saying? And gave him over 400,000, uh, no, he gave him, him 2.5 million kilograms of wheat every year. And gave him over 400,000 liters of oil every year for seven years. They built that place for seven years. He was giving him that for seven years. Why? Because there's no one as skilled. There's no one as what? A skill. So how do we go on the journey of this skill? Number one is the principle of exercise. Is the principle of what? You cannot become an expert if you don't exercise. And the degree to which you exercise is the degree to which you excel. Is the degree to which you become an expert. All right? He says, strong meat belongeth unto them who by reason of use exercise. You have to exercise yourself. The word exercise there is gymnasium. It's the word you get from gymnasium or gym. That means you have to work the muscles of your gifting and grow them into strength and build them into capacity that is unique in its delivery so that it can command reward at that level. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's the principle of what? The principle of exercise. Now, it's God that put that gift on the inside of you. And if you are going to use the principle of exercise, in fact, it is better for you if the conditions are unfavorable because the pressure, they apply pressure on that gift to work. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what you see our Nigerian people. They go abroad like this. They finish, when they do their studies abroad, they just breeze through it. Because when you are studying here, ah, this one now that they are telling us to turn off our freezer. They, they, you, know what I'm saying? They, they, you use you 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 use candle, you use all those things, eh? Palace of all. you use touchlight of all, to be studying in the You enter lab like this. They say we are going to lab. Have you seen lab before? Yeah. You enter lab like this. Three people will be sharing beaker. Do you know what I'm saying? Do, do, do that's how you, <laughs> because you didn't see those things practically, so you have to, you have to ram it into your head by turning. So when you now get to the place where you enter into a lab and you see everything, you say, oh, <laughs> then we know today, because you have been hungry to practicalize a lot of things that you know. You will just manifest genius in that place. They say, these Nigerians, these Nigerians, these Nigerians, what is it about Nigeria? We are not sitting on the gifting. We are processing. We are working on it. Because we have a very, very natural, natural disaster that puts the pressure on us. It's called government. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, nobody is as skillful as you. There are things that are unique about you. Listen, 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 listen. The Bible says in all labor there is profit. Some things that somebody is doing and they are well to do, some other people are doing it and they are broke. So it's not, I've, I've met oil and gas people before, that the only thing that is oil and gas about them is the card that they gave you. They say, yeah, so, 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 oil and gas, so, so, so. when they bring that blade, they jump inside bus. They are going. They, they, no, I'm, I'm telling you, bro, I'm saying that it's, it's oil and gas. There's no oil. And it's gassed out. There's not, not everything is just, do you it's just mouth. And you see somebody, you say, what do you do? They'll just tell you something simple. <laughs> and when they come out, when you see what's going on, say, how are you doing this? <laughs> the grace of God. You know, they are using humility to tell you. If you know the wisdom that is running that thing. Was it not a clock that told the people and said, listen, uh, he said, uh, what's this? Uh, this burger, McDonald's. And he was teaching the students. And he said, where do you think all the billions of the, of the burger is coming from, McDonald's? They said, ah, the uniqueness of the taste, the clinical of the something, the distance. I was looking at them. He said, people don't understand. He said, it's coming from real estate. They said, eh? You do burger, burger. What was real estate and burger? He said, have you noticed that anywhere, you, any place you find this thing is always at uh, the ground floor and it's always uh, a few stories up? He said, yes. He said, we always make sure we buy the building. We put the burger down. We come and eat the burger and we are collecting rent. Are you getting what I'm saying? But, but they will not tell you that one. No, no. They found their own genius. Are you getting what I'm saying? They found their own job. So number one is the principle of what? The principle of exercise. The principle of exercise. Number two, you must be led by the spirit. All right? I know a brother that, listen, that when his mates finished, when they finished their first degree, everybody, at that time, it was the thing to go abroad for your master's, you know, at that time. That time, they will go do the master's and come back, not the jackpot one. <laughs> so they will go, everybody will go and all that. And, everything. and so, he was planning to go, and the Spirit of God said, don't go. Ah. The Spirit of God said, no, no, you don't need that one now. Don't go. So he stayed back. Everybody was going to do their, this thing. he stayed back. And he said, what do I do? He said, just, no, no, you will do your master's, but I will tell you what you will do. When it was time for him to do it, what God asked him to go and do had nothing to do with his original. But when the place he got his first job, God gave him a relationship there and opened him up into a training that introduced him into the financial industry. Completely different from his first degree. Introduced him into the financial industry. Are you getting what I'm saying? And as he entered into the financial industry, he began to grow and began to develop other types of expertise in that space. As he was developing that expertise, a new branch was opening up onto him. The financial industry now opened him up into a relationship that brought him into another sector entirely. God now said, in this sector, go and do it, master. So it's not what he studied. It's not the first career path he had. It was in the second one. God now said do. Now when God said do this now, he could do it and pay for it in any amount. He didn't need any family, anybody to because God had now developed him financially that he could do it. When he did it, he was in a meeting, a global meeting in Kenya and he was the only person that had that expertise. He just opened all kinds of doors for him. Are you getting what I'm saying? He just opened all kinds of doors for him. Because he was led by what? The Spirit. Listen, listen. In the next five years, you, you cannot say these are the jobs that are going to be. Shimon Perez said something. He said, every expert is the expert of yesterday. There is nobody who is an expert of tomorrow. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's the future. Only God is the expert of tomorrow. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's the one that knows what tomorrow is, can guide you. That's the advantage you have as a child of God. That the Spirit of God can come and tell you, go in this direction. And you go in that direction, before you know it, something just opens up for you. And as it opens up for you, you just see that before everybody knows what's happening, ah, you, you have gone. 
But you must exercise yourself. You must what? Exercise yourself in your gift. And to exercise yourself requires discipline. No? It requires what? Discipline. In order for you to exercise yourself into expertise, into excellence, requires discipline. Let me tell you, if you follow this path, uh, you know, the world will have no choice than to come to the church. I'm telling you, the world will have what? We have no choice than to come to the church. So if anything you are going to take from this service today is a determination. Is what? A determination that you are going to take your skill to the next level. You are not the only person God gave skill. But what you do with it can make you stand out. It is how a man works it. He says God is the builder of all things, but every house is built by some man. How are you going to build your own? What are you going to do with it? How are you going to work it? How are you going to design it? One of my young men in those days is, is, is a big boy today in his own right. And in those days, they used to call me Bob Shea. And he said, Bob Shea, he taught us one thing. Prepare yourself for half a chance. That if all you get is half of a chance, that's all you need. He said, then I sat down and I began to develop myself. That if all I get is half of a chance, that is all I will need. That I don't even need an entire chance. A small opportunity, they will know. When David went that way, he didn't go back to the ship again. It was over. That phase was over now. That phase was over. He became king son-in-law. Uh, the boy went single, came back married. What are you telling me? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah! He went as a taxpayer. Next time, he was tax exempt. He went as a commoner. He came back as royalty. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the glory of God was manifest in his life by the operation of his own skill. See, tomorrow nobody has told us anybody that can use sling in the scriptures like David did. He used that one in a way nobody knew. Ask me, I catapult David house. <laughs> so you guys don't know anything. You know. Because in the season of your wilderness, God is developing an expertise that will bring you into the place of glory. Don't complain in that wilderness. Hold the skills. Work on it. Develop it. I know this service is not a shouting service, but this is, this is, this is where secret is. All right? I know this message is not an emotional message, but this is where we become the men and the women that the society have to recognize if civilization has to go to the next level. Are you getting what I'm saying? So put yourself, put your hands to work, put your heart to it, put your feet in it. Let your mind get to work. Develop your skill. Own it. Be the best that God has designed you to be. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the world will look for you. I have no choice. The world will look for you. If you're working in a place, say, what I want, what I want, I want to add something to this place. Potiphar saw that God was with Joseph. How? Was it because Joseph was saying that, I'm a child of God. I'm a... He did praise worship every morning in the office. That's not it. Results. 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 Somebody said to me that if we were just talking one day, the corporate, you know, an executive director of one of these insurance companies, that brother, and I was saying, he said, well, so if somebody goes on a vacation and for two weeks they do not call you from that office, they can do without you. <laughs> they can do without you. If they sack you, they won't feel it. <laughs> you went over there, you know what people say, ah, we are missing you. Ah, if you are here, or anything, or they call you, they say, ah, and there's something, you know, we know you're on vacation, but this thing. They, they did not see, you see that came back and they say, ah, you're back? Ah, they can do it without you. <laughs> if they suck you, they won't feel you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Please. If not that Potiphar just had to, you know, well, had to do the man. If it was not that slave that went to lie, against Joseph. He will drive that slave away. Or it's his wife. Do you understand? So he has to do the man. I say, I put that boy in jail. And when they put him in jail, they still went to put him in the hands of the chief warder, not the common place. So help me keep this boy. 
I just have to put him here, but you just help me keep him. And that one now took him and gave him to the special prisoners, <laughs> VIP prisoners that were there. He said, I'll be serving this man. You can see the threat there. Now even Potiphar still dealt with him with respect. But he just had to do Mrs. Potiphar's uh, bit. Do you get what I'm saying? So please ensure that you go in the direction of excellence and distinction. And you experience the blessing of God. Listen, doing what everybody is doing is not a problem. But doing it in a way that everybody is not doing it is where the glory is. All right? Can be selling what everybody is selling. But you are selling it differently. It will open the market for you. It will open the market for you. Cowbell just put it inside Lilo and designed it. They know that if we are tired of carrying that can, put hole here, put hole here, and use paper to cover it and put it inside the fridge. Because we just want to use the one we want to use now. But you have to go and buy the whole can. And then you use the one you want to use, the milk. And then you use paper and cover it and put it inside the fridge. And we make it, hoping that it doesn't get bad. I say no now. You can buy the one you just want to use now. And they put it inside sachet and give it to you. And they call it your milk. You to say it's our milk. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Have you noticed that the, the rider of, you have to pay attention, the riders of many of these organizations doesn't go beyond three words. Glow with pride. Everywhere you go. It's, it's, do you understand? It doesn't go big. They know that the moment is long, people will forget. Do you understand it? Magic concerts. Shop. Shop. Easy. All right? Winners. And there. Do you understand what I'm saying? The moment you hear it, your mind goes in one place. Expose your mind. There are things that there is a lot of knowledge that God will not give you again. He has put it in humanity. You will go and find it inside books. You will read it. And God is so wonderful that we make sure that they did not put it on YouTube until you go and read it in a book. Do you understand what I'm saying? And let me tell you, your reading is life. It brings elasticity to your thinking. Do you understand? It brings what? elasticity to your thinking. Many people, their brain has shrunk. I was listening to one doctor and she said that the reason people die early in some, well, let me not say it that way. He said one of the things that cut life short in people is that they lose muscles. They lose muscles. All right? And muscle, they are like life receptors in your system. And the more you are losing muscle, the more you are losing life. And when they get into old age, because the insulin receptors in the body are in, are in the muscles, and their muscles are not worked, therefore, they have lost the capacity to receive insulin and work it well in their system. So uh, all, that, all those things, high blood pressure, all those things begin to come in. And he said, what do we do? He said, just work your muscles. God created man for movement. Technology has put us on one spot. Are you with me? It's knowledge. It's what? It's knowledge. It's important for you to exercise yourself, you increase yourself in knowledge, all right? In the development of your skill. And discipline is key. Discipline is key. Discipline means that you are not nice with yourself. You are not lenient with yourself. Are you with me? You are not lenient with yourself. Let me sleep small. Let me sleep small. You see that small, small. By the time you calculate it in one year, three months have gone. You have slept for three months extra in an entire year. Wake up and wise up. My prayer for you this morning is that the Lord will give you the determination of heart, all right? The determination of what? Of a heart to be able to do that which is required 
for the genius that God has put on the inside of you to come forth with light and distinction in the name of Jesus Christ. You are a candidate for excellence and distinction. That grace for the discipline that is required is my prayer for you this morning. And I pray that the Lord Almighty will enable you in the name of Jesus Christ to bring that discipline to bear that you might do the bidding of the gifting of God upon your life and use it to bring glory to his name and distinction and excellence to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Let's quickly package our offering this morning. And if you're online, you need to make a transfer this morning. The details of the account is already on the screen. And if you're on site also, you want to make a transfer. The details are on the screen. Even as part of our worship unto our God. David says, I will not give unto the Lord what does not cost me anything. All right, shall we lift up our offering unto the Lord as we begin to appreciate Him for another time, another privilege? To give in his presence. He has given us opportunity to walk. And to be blessed through the work of our ends. And from that which he has blessed us with. We have also come to appreciate him. To thank him for the privilege of being blessed. Father we thank you. Father, we thank you. We see it as a privilege, O oh God, to give and to worship you with our offering. We ask that you will receive it of our hands and give us more opportunities to be blessed and to also give more unto you. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Shall we drop our offering this morning? Hallelujah. What a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. I will worship you. Forever love you, forever because this God is too good. Oh. I will worship you forever love you, forever because this God is too good. Oh. This God is. God is too good, oh. I will worship, I will worship you forever. This morning I'm seeing a new face in the midst of us. 
and I believe my brother is worshiping with us for the very first time. All right, so we want to welcome you to Keyword Christian Center. This is a place where God opens up the destiny of men unto them. It's a place of revelation, it's a place of insight, and I believe that as we worship it with us, uh, the Lord will open you more and more unto that which he wants you to do, and your place in God will also be revealed more and more unto you. So a card will be given to you this morning. Please fill it accordingly and um, submit it when you are through. And after the service, we'll have just a few minutes with you to discuss. Shall we stand up on our feet as we put the service to a close? Hallelujah. Let's lift up our voices and appreciate God for the revelation of his word unto us even this morning that that which the Lord has opened our eyes to see we receive grace to work it out we receive grace to be disciplined we receive grace to be led of God into a life of excellence into a life of greatness a believer cannot be great until he is acquainted with the spirit of the Lord Let's pray that the Lord will release continually the grace to walk that which we have heard this morning out in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Shall we share the grace and fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and God's mercies are following us all the days of our lives and we are dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord.